Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a fantabulous couple in love that loves reacting to some fantasy stuff. Yeah, we do. And we love reacting to some Elden Ring. Woohoo! Uh, so this is Elden Ring, uh, another Vadi video. Uh, Elden Ring movie, The Lord of Frenzied Flame. Ooh. Yeah, and so if you want all of our uh, Elden Ring reactions, go ahead and check out the description of this video. We got a playlist there for you. Um, and, you know, Elden Ring has its own drink. Yeah! We showed you this once before, but it was on the rocks. And the on the rocks kind of messed with like the whole gold luster of this drink. Mm -hmm. So we thought it would be better to do it as a martini from now on. So you guys can kind of see a little bit of the gold shimmery dust in there. Yeah. So uh, this is the tarnished tonic. To the tarnished tonic. Cheers. Cheers. The lands between the double wind, mired in lightsaber and mm -hmm. despair. Is there really anything here worth fighting for? Is there any one worth saving? Hello? Is somebody there? My name is Arena. I've escaped from Castle Morn to the south. My good father secreted me out the castle, but decided himself to stay. He says it's his duty. As commander, the servants there have rebelled. Filled with hatred for every one of us. They've since come for every one of the companions I escaped with. They haven't spared a soul. Just for good measure, chop him again. I, I fear for father's life. And my sole wish is that he escape. Oh, that's so badass. Mm -hmm. The slaves of Castle Morn are misbegotten. Their very existence is considered to be a punishment. But their only crime was being born outside of grace. So it's no wonder that hatred has fermented in their hearts, inspiring them to finally break free of their masters. The next step in a cycle Ooh. of revenge that began at Castle Morn long ago. I see. From Arena. Thank you. I'm in your debt, but I can't leave yet. Even if the castle should fall, as commander, I must remain. That's a to sword. Ensure the treasured the sword Iron Throne of Sword yeah. does not fall into the wrong hands. Ages ago, a lone champion fought at Castle Morn. His entire clan had been vanquished, but he grafted their swords onto his own and continued to fight. Ooh. So determined was he to claim his revenge. And so, this became the legendary sword of Castle Morn. It was claimed by the banished knights of Godric, stolen by a misbegotten, and then passed down to you. And with it, the cycle of revenge continues. Back through. Mm -hmm. An eye for an eye. I'm in your debt for keeping the sword from those fallen creatures. You know, Kidnapper. I'm no longer bound by duty. Once I've rescued Arena, I will spend my remaining days with her. <gasps> yeah, I'm afraid of that. Okay, not kidnapping. Rena, how could this be? My daughter deserved better. The fault lies with me. I chose duty over my daughter's safety. And that oh. is how fate has answered. I'll find them. The foul wretch is responsible for this. I'll hunt them down and exterminate every last one of them. Rest assured, Marina, it will be done. Okay. Revenge story. I dig it. Hmm. You're a tarnished. Is that Santa Claus? I can <laughs> see it. But I can also see that you're not after my throat. Then why not purchase a little something? I am Carly, purveyor of fine goods. I am of a nomadic people, selling wares as I travel. The land has been tainted by madness since the shattering of the Elden Ring. It's only tarnished like yourself, who keep things from drying up entirely. Let's say you're a very welcome customer. It's quite the outfit. There are others of my people who yet survive in these lands. 
If the mood takes you and you meet one, then offer them some trade, won't you? My people, wanderers all have long been spurned by the grace of gold, which is why we cannot settle, but instead are forced into this pitiful, unceasing journey. But thanks to that, things are not so different for us now. I think this makes us kindred spirits of sorts. Your people, the tarnished, and mine. See that no harm comes to my kin. We have a saying, we wanderers. Lament not your solitude. Cool Expect no sympathy, <laughs> no regard. <Back> scratcher. <laughs> but if anyone Whoa. dares harm us, That's show nasty. them no mercy. That is our code, so to speak. Just the way we are. Deeply unforgiving. Deep within the eyes of the oldest merchants, a secret is hidden. Deeply unforgiving, indeed. But <laughs> I've done all I can here. I'm thinking of moving elsewhere for a time. So far, we've spoken of misbegotten, banished knights, tarnished, Ooh. and merchants. That was cool. All were spurned by grace in one way or another. You can't go too far without wondering if the Golden Order is to blame for the oceans of anger and despair. Mm. The when we last met Edgar, case. he swore revenge upon the misbegotten. But now, all must die, misbegotten or not. Mm, and if you defeat problem. Edgar, you will receive a Shabriri grape. It's our proof that his need for revenge no longer divides or distinguishes. Love, oh. revenge, melt it all away in the yellow chaos flame. Ooh. Great music. <laughs> oh, damn. But there are those who fight against the tarnished who stalk their own. Yura, the hunter of bloody fingers, Imagine will often that. be at your side. Oh, the nuts! Oh, well, that's one way to get him. Yura comes from the land of reeds, a place that has long been locked in a miserable civil war. Mm. And it's said that the entire nation has succumbed to a blood-soaked madness. It's not too surprising, then, that Yura fights against any blood craze tarnished, whether they serve the Lord of Blood or otherwise. But Yura's true mark is a drake knight named Eleonora, located at the Second Church of America, where she kills Yura in cold blood. Once, Eleonora had a legacy as a proud knight, but because of her dragon communion, it seems her humanity has slipped away. So, you put that legacy to rest. By now, it should be clear that madness takes many forms. Hello? Is someone there? My name is Hayata, and I'm journeying in search of the distant light. If I might be so bold as to ask, would you donate any Shabriri grapes in your possession to me? She looks like Arena. Yeah. I must say, I thought she got but sliced. Arena is dead. Somehow, this Hayata has taken over that body. But for what purpose? She barely even knows herself. I can feel a distant light in the back of my eyes. It will lead me to my true duty as a finger maiden. You're not like the others who give me grapes, are you? They rest their trembling give hands upon me. Grapes? Howling wordlessly, they gently stroke my eyes. What? Their frail fingers, emaciated. Yet still, they give me the grapes, but you seem somehow firmer. Now I can feel the distant light once more. That aside, I wonder what Shabriri grapes really are. Delectably tender and sweet, yet searing. What a sight they must be to behold. Of course, the Shabriri grapes are eyes. Yellow, that. shriveled, and oozing. That's not possible. Not all of those people. Their own. So those noises I heard were... <laughs> yeah, that, oh. that would make you want to hurl. <gasps> yep. Oh, 
Nothing can be as innocent like you can't just have grapes. You gotta be eyes. Shin Shabriri. The most reviled man in all of history. It all began long ago with the crime of slander. Shabriri came up with a lie. And it was so damaging, so heinous, that his eyes were gouged out as a punishment when that lie was proven to be false. We can't be sure of what was said, but what if Shabriri slandered the nomadic merchants? What if, with a crooked smile, he accused them of the very crime he himself was guilty of, saying that they had fraternized with the three fingers and were not to be trusted? This would explain why the nomadic merchants came to be so hated. It is said, after all, that the sickness of the Flame of Frenzy began with Shabriri. And after his eyes were gouged out, the blight of the Flame of Frenzy came to dwell in his empty sockets. The yellow eyes became known as Shabriri Grapes, and frenzy started to infect the despairing world. A madness that belongs to those who have lost everything. Ah, by the way, well, even we had a place to call home once. The Great Caravan, they called it. But it's been lost to us for ages. I've been searching for it as long as I can remember. And with a name like that, you'd hope they kept some fine goods there, eh? I've always preferred my own company to that of other people's. And I don't have any burning questions I wish to ask my ancestors. But there's something I need to know. My roots. I want to know who I am. Mm. Where I came from. Carefully, man. I like the answer. Where I'm headed. Yeah. I hope you can join me at the Great Caravan, in fact. Who knows what wonders there might be to trade. If Shabriri did indeed slander the merchants, then he knew exactly what their despair might bring. What, what would it bring? Ah. Uh. Is that you over there? I've gleaned something very important indeed, thanks to you. The reason why it was eyes I had to eat. The distant light is far and frail. So faint it can't be seen by the naked eye. But with everyone's eyes together, it appears. Finally, it all makes sense. I'm certain now. I will be a finger maiden. So you're gonna continue to eat eyes. Did you donate a fingerprint grape to me? They're special grapes which only grow on those who've been clasped by the burnt fingers. We only know of one other who was clasped in such a manner. His name was Vike, the Dragon Spear. Ooh. After the war with the ancient dragons, there came the rise of the dragon cultists who earned the dragon's affection. One of the most beloved was Vike the Dragon Spear, a tarnished descended from Godfrey, who eventually returned from across the sea to join the Round Table Hold in hopes of becoming Elden Lord. To this end, Vike was assigned like a, a with finger, maiden finger thing. and acquired the power of two great runes. But when he stood before the thorns of the oak tree, he realized the truth that a maiden's true purpose is to burn the thorns for the one who would become Elden Lord. And whether it was born of love or duty, Vike refused to burn his maiden. For the whisperings of Shabriri had told him of another flame. A flame of frenzy hidden deep below the capital that could burn the thorns away. Oh, but when Vike returned, his maiden was dead. Did she commit suicide after betraying her purpose? Or was Vike captured and punished for his treason? Whatever the case, now Vike's vengeful spirit defends the dead maiden at the Church of Inhibition, hmm. while the real Vike kneels imprisoned in an ever jail deep within the Forbidden Lands, clad in armor clasped by three burnt fingers. This is all that remains of the contender 
that was supposed to become Elden Lord. red lightning yeah. and I raise you blue lightning. <laughs> Ooh, that's a lot of blood. Both check and push mm -hmm. at the same time. Oh! Whoa! Okay, his move was better. <gasps> Giant dragon claw. It's the hand of death. Okay, dude, you need some better moves. Yeah. How come you can't turn into a dragon? <laughs> or can you? Maybe? Oh, he's got the flaming eyes. Oh, Cyclops! Okay, all right. Nice block, maybe? So there are fireworks going off from his head. Mm -hmm. Oh, now they're both dragons. Okay, so it's Scorpion yep. and Sub Zero. Yeah, I was about to say, that makes me think of Mortal Kombat. It's <laughs> a badass fight. Yeah, it is. Ooh. Oh, he's got a big sword. He's got a scythe. Scorpion's yeah, winning. Start dodging. Dodge! Oh! KO'd! Dude, what happened to your Finally, horse? Finally, we meet the tarnished who would be Lord. Oh my. Why the long face? I fear that you were previously acquainted with this vessel. Well, that is most unfortunate. For he is dead. Mm. As for his flesh, he gave it to me. Shabriri. Oh! I hope you can make your peace with that. You are about to sacrifice something precious. The life of a fair maiden that you would toss into the fiery forge. Only so that you may be Lord. What a horrible thing to ponder. Your ascendancy requires her sacrifice, whether she wishes it or not. But how would the Lord, crowned so, be looked upon? Chosen tarnished and would be Lord dare to tread the path of true rigor. Spare the poor girl, and singe your own flesh in her stead. If you are prepared to show resolve and attain lordship through righteous hardship, then heed the words of I, Shabriri. <sighs> Chosen, tarnished, and would-be lord, descend into the depths far below the Earth Tree capital. Seek audience with the three fingers and the flame of frenzy. If you inherit the flame of frenzy, your flesh will serve as kindling. Burn the earth tree to the ground and incinerate all that divides and distinguishes. Ah, may chaos take the world. May chaos yeah, thank you. Okay. It's like maybe don't listen to this guy. Yeah. 
is chaos. Frenzied flame, I ask that you cease. It is not to be meddled with. It is chaos, devouring life and thought unending. However ruined this world has become, however mired in torment and despair, life endures. <laughs> All Births jars continue. There is beauty in that, is there not? If you would become Lord. Do not deny this notion. Please, leave the frenzied flame alone. And maybe you would have left it alone. <laughs> were it not for the horrors that you found down there. Did you see? What they did to my ancestors. The whole clan buried alive. Sick. Maddened. Husks of themselves. If you heard their moans, they're hardly human anymore. They think we worship the three fingers that we called the maddening sickness down upon them. Well, if that's what they expect from us, then that's what they shall Don't get from know. us! The world of Grace and his people should have been content to see us sink between the cracks, but to have intruded upon our solace, having broken us upon their whims? Any of you. Understandable. Yeah. We won't be training any longer. Wait. What's that? That burn. Your eyes. You've inherited the flame of frenzy. Unknown warrior. Divest yourself of everything. Our three fingers throw wide the door. Three creepy fingers. Please, of course, obviously. A frenzied flame to melt away the curses, suffering, and despair, and the order entire. It's probably pretty cold.
Was? Awesome shots. Howled without words, saying they wish they were never born. Become their lord. Take their torment, despair, their affliction, every sin, every curse, and melt it all away. As lord of chaos, no more fractures. No more birth. And so it is that an eye for an eye leaves the whole world oh. blind. Yeah. You have inherited the frenzied flame. Congratulations. The pity. Our accord ends here. Oh. Ghost Rider. Which is the higher Sauron. That's crazy. Frenzied flame. I will seek you as far as you may travel. <sighs> to deliver you what is yours. Death. Destined death. Oh, yeah. Thank you for watching. If you want to get early access to more videos like this, then you can consider signing up to my Patreon. The money from there helped me to invest really heavily into this episode. For example, the music that you heard during the Kale scene was completely custom made just for this video. It was commissioned oh, wow. from the hugely talented Alex Rowe. Yeah. I wanted to take the merchant Beautiful. violin that you hear in game yeah. and then evolve it into its own soundtrack. And Alex did this great job at creating a song that really elevated the mood of mm -hmm. this Prepare to Cry episode. Mm -hmm. And of course, this episode wouldn't be half as good also without the efforts of Miss Pap One, who came up with the visuals and the editing ideas for this episode 
episode and he just inspired so much of the story here. So be sure to give them props in the comments as well. Definitely. Special thanks also to Sekiro Dubi for showing off Kale's cut quest line, which served as inspiration for this episode as well. And thanks in general to all of the modders and the hackers who mm. give us the tools mm. that we need to properly tell the stories of Elden Ring. And again, thank you for watching. I'll try to do a shorter Prepare to Cry episode next time, I think. <laughs> and I'll see you then. Oh, that one, like, I mean, he didn't have much of a narration in that one as he normally does in his other videos. Uh, that really felt more like, um, I don't know, like a, like a movie. So the last Prepare to Cry episode made me cry. Like, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm not sure how the final edit looked, but I'm I'm pretty sure it was unavoidable to know that I sort of broke down because we had lost dogs and then the dog dies and that and is like howling and I just, ooh, I couldn't take it. Yeah. Um, this Prepare to Cry hit on such a different emotional level because I haven't experienced in a video game that sense of despair and hopelessness and like mm. darkness in the world. I'm just not used to that in video games. Video games, okay, you have Mario, you're a good guy, and you have Bowser, you're a bad guy, and like, go, beat them, mm -hmm. it's fine. This just had such a such a different immersiveness to it that was very well portrayed by the visuals in this. And then of course the music, which he rightly shouts out at the end, just yeah. music has a great way of playing with our emotions. And the way that they had the music in this was so perfect at that moment of like going down into that thing, seeing what happened to his ancestors and then saying like, okay, so this is what you think of me, then fine. And he like, he goes in for the all out golden eye chaos, awfulness and and I don't know it was just it was something so different from video games like not to belittle my reaction the last time or the work that he did but like when the dog dies I'm gonna cry <laughs> like yes our dogs recently died so it was like even worse this time around but like I'm always gonna cry when the dog dies true this was something so new and so different and so elevated beyond anything I've experienced in video games um it does kind of remind me of Alien Isolation okay in that that video game brought me the feeling of being hunted that I had never experienced before. Yeah. Um, so it elevated video game, like go against the bad guy and make sure you survive kind of typical feeling into something so much more unsettling and anxiety ridden. Um, and I just have to shout out the evolution of video games because this is so, I mean, magnificent and also kind of disturbing that we can go to like the pits of despair and here, try out what it's like to be hunted. Like, mm -hmm. isn't that fun? And it is, but like in a twisted way. <laughs> and I like that when uh, the guy was being told, just like, you know what you need to do? Instead of sacrificing someone, like it started off altruistic. Like the guy that it was uh, basically, um, that had killed everyone down below in the in the, in the the tunnel or and um, had blamed everything on them. Like all his, whatever uh, deeds, uh, Saibon, Saibon, uh, uh, Probably not even close. Began with an S. Pretty sure I began with an S. We'll call him, I don't know, like side bitch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? So side bitch, when he was um, taking over uh, Lampshade guy with a <laughs> yep. Lampshade Samurai. Yep, I was thinking of him as Lampshade Raiden. Lampshade Raiden, that, 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 that works too. He took over his body and he was trying to tell uh, the guy that had the frenzy flame, oh, you know what, you know, you could kill somebody like, you know, and, and take your position a, a, as a Lord yourself, or, you know, you could do something more noble and like, you know, and, and go through the flames yourself and, and, uh, and get the power through like a more righteous way and a, and a noble way and, you know, and self-sacrifice way. And he started out very good. Like that's, you know, that's how, that's how they hook you. That's how e e evil hooks you with the, with the thought and promise of like, you know, wanting to do good and wanting to do something, um, noble but then like twisting it around and using oh. that for uh evil purposes and he took himself and then he took it a little bit far side bitch went a little bit too far there when he turned his back he's just like yeah and then chaos <gasps> bring chaos <laughs> yeah it's like, it's, like, it's like he couldn't hold back his evil long enough to get him to do like to, to for the for the manip for the manipulation to work mm -hmm. um and so i like that the fact that he's just like no, I'm just gonna stab you and uh, and kill you because what you're saying is crazy shit. And uh, yeah, it's it's you're 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 a bad person. As we were watching that scene, like, because lampshade Raiden had come up a few times, and I was like, 
oh, is he like our Jiminy Cricket? Is he like kind of a moral guide? <laughs> is he trying to like steer our character in the right direction to stay on story? I was like, what? what is this guy all about? Mm-hmm. And then we get to that scene where he's got like this sort of the big speech. I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Are you leading us into a cult? And then boom, he stabs him. I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, you are. You were leading us into a cult. Yep. Um, Because he just kind of like, it was like everything was fine until suddenly you got this like sort of like twisted feeling in your gut of like, wait, suddenly it's not fine. And suddenly, what? Are we, I'm sorry, what are we talking about? And and always be wary when someone throws in the word righteousness. Like, oh, if you want to do the righteous thing, do this. And you're just, wait, a, wait a second. Like, I don't know. That's like one of those red flag words that you start to get a little bit skeptical of. Um, And so as soon as he's like, yeah, just to be righteous, throw yourself into the flames. And and I'm like, okay. Um, So we're going down a dark path. So (laughs) it was was, also light and cherry before that. (laughs) Yeah. But I was really like, when that happened and he stabbed him from behind, I was like, okay, yeah, that was, that was the right move. I usually don't cheer for people stabbing people in the back. But in this case, I was, I was comfortable with it. Probably not admirable, but. You know, there you have it. Also, the uh, eating of the eyes. Ah. Yeah. I, I, I mean. So well done. Well, I guess you put that together faster than I did because um, when they talk about grapes, I'm like, that is such a stupid thing to put in there. Like, what are they talking <laughs> about grapes for? Like, oh, yeah. And they bring me grapes and everything like that. And I was just like, that seems that seems out of place in this kind of, in, in what Elden Ring, that, that I know of Elden Ring, you know, I mean, if you even play Elden Ring, but just what, what we've uh, been watching from Elden Ring, I'm just like, to just randomly talk about like, people are bringing you grapes? Well, see, recently Elden Ring is being sponsored by a vineyard and they partnered ah, okay. with a local grocery store. Now, so yeah. they had to like slip in a little bit of marketing. And that, and that, yeah, 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 and that would make sense. <laughs> no, I had the same thoughts as you. And then when they started to go into like how sweet they were, mm. that's when it clicked in my brain. I'm like, oh, wouldn't it be really creepy if it was something gross like, and I was literally thinking like eyeballs when they said eyeballs. I was like, oh no, I so wish I hadn't been right about that. Yeah. (laughs) Because that was very, very dark and twisted. I also, just on sort of like a human nature and psychology level, I love what they did with the guy who goes down into the thing, sees a terrible thing that's happened to his people. His people are of course hurting. And Mm -hmm. as we've said many times, hurt people hurt people. They're angry. They're blaming him and assuming that he and getting involved with chaos is what led them to this awful despair, assuming that I piece that all together, right? And then he goes, fine, you think it was me and you think it was chaos and that's what it'll be. And it just, there are so many times when throughout history, like, and, and human interactions, if we believe well in others, if we put our faith in others, people mm-hmm. very often rise to that and don't want to disappoint us. I mean, yeah, you're always going to have those bad actors, those like sociopathic people or narcissistic people or whatever who are who are the outliers. Mm-hmm. I, I have to believe they are the minority, but they'll be terrible and you just have to forget about them. But generally, people are going to like rise to that and go for it. On the flip side of that coin, if you're constantly telling someone they're terrible, they're to blame, they're a pardon the expression, piece of shit, Mm -hmm. very often that's what they're going to become because they are going to start either seeing themselves in the same way that you are communicating to them. Yeah. Or they're going to do it to spite you because that's human nature. Um, So I just love that, like, I talked about how this game has elevated playing with our emotions and storytelling and going to places that I haven't experienced video games going to in terms of, like, some of the darker stuff. But I also loved that piecing up psychology in there and their storytelling and fleshing out their characters and really like Elden Ring goes deep on stuff. They they yeah. they don't stay surface level at all. They really flush things out and I applaud them for that. But even going back to what you said about like uh, you know, some some people that like, you know, they're terrible and everything and they're awful and you know, they're worthless. Uh it's not only just necessarily like doing that like out of spite, like sometimes it's just um then when something happens that reinforces that idea that other people have said, uh, then you go down that path and you start to think that they were right about about everything that, that, that they said. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, uh, it's something, well, if people are only gonna view me one way, if people are always gonna only gonna view me as a monster, okay, well then I'm gonna be a monster because by trying, like, you know, by trying to be something that, you know, by trying to be a, a good person or, or trying to, you know, um, not be what people see me as and trying to prove them wrong, 
like what is what has this led to and it led to like you know as people like uh, being like slaughtered and so it's like okay well, like if you want a monster like here's here's a monster um it's also a thing with social creatures too because social creatures by nature rely on feedback from yeah. those that they socialize with humans are social creatures so when you have someone who's constantly nitpicking you or constantly only seeing the worst in you or constantly having negative thoughts in reality what you will eventually grow up to learn whether it's mm -hmm. when you're like 15 or 50 at some point in your life you will learn that's reflecting on them and that's how they probably view themselves and it is their own inner demons that are coming out in the way that they communicate to you but especially when you're younger and like if that's coming from a parent figure or a role model or a coach or something you internalize it as something about you because they're supposed to know better yeah um and so when that's all you're hearing and then you think but like i did do this thing that i was supposed to do like you always complain about how i never take out the trash i took out the trash and well now you didn't clean up your bedroom it's like okay well like i can't win then like i'm doing <laughs> what i'm supposed to do and i get no positive reinforcement and you find something new that's negative it's like it's gonna it's gonna put you into a dark spiral because you literally never get any positive light. Yeah, and it just goes to show that, like you know, I mean, if you, random, act, random acts of kindness uh, yes. go a long way. So if you can ever, like you know, just smile, you know, not a creepy smile, but you know, like <laughs> like, like smile, it'll smile at somebody, or you know, give them a, give them a compliment. Um, you never know how far that's gonna go because yes. of, of, of the day that they had, or they might be feeling down, like and like they are, uh, you know, do feel like worthless at that point. And then someone like comes out and shows them an act of, an act of kindness. Not only does it help them, like you know, reinforce the self like about themselves that they feel better about themselves, but then you start feeling better about like humanity in general, and um, you know that the world is not so terrible and not so dark and bleak. Um, so yeah, that's just you know from this from, the, from from this darkness that we got from Elden Ring. It's just like you know, let's, let's shed a little bit of light into into our world. <laughs> And light is contagious. Positivity is contagious. Yeah. So like if you're nice to somebody, that person suddenly starts feeling a little bit better about their world, they're then nice to someone. It's like- yeah, The pay it forward, yeah. It is the pay it forward. And you don't even have to be like, hey, I told you something nice, go pay it forward. <laughs> That's gonna be a little bit awkward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, along with a smile, you know, maybe you should no, don't don't smile awkwardly. Don't smile awkwardly at people. But just by doing something nice, it is incredible how as as contagious as negativity is, as contagious as it is to go into the dark spiral of like flicking somebody off on the freeway and then like knocking into somebody and not apologizing for it. And like all those terrible things that you can mm -hmm. do that to you are seemingly small and innocuous, but to other people can have a big impact. The same thing happens with good things and positive things and nice things. Um, and the world could use more of that right yeah. now. A lot more. <laughs> Let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments. And if you want all of our Elden Ring reactions, check out the description of this video. We got playlists there for you. And you can get early ad free access to videos like this on our Patreon, which yeah. is a link down below in the description of this video. Thanks so much for checking out our reaction for an Elden Ring movie, The Lord of Frenzied Flame. But just keep in mind that our reaction is definitely not definitive. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>